welcome back here at the GSL for the World. Again, a reminder, come to the finals. It's going to be tomorrow, starting at 3 p.m. KST. Get there early. It's going to fill up. Yeah. It's you should really come down if you're inside yeah. of Korea. It is a blast. GSL, uh, Freaka TV puts on amazing shows. Blizzard's helping out. They put on amazing shows. Rotterdam and Controller here, they put on amazing shows. You know, it's it, we all want to meet you. It's going to be fun. There's going to be Tastosis as well. Don't save the best for last. Well, I mean, you can just start I, off with yourself. I don't want to say that, and then I'm like, yeah, and other stuff too. And yeah. people are like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> they, they peaked early today. Yeah. They? <laughs> so get down here, guys. Uh, we would love to have you. And it's not just going to be the final match, but also the show match between the Koreans and the non Koreans. Here's what we have laid out for you. We will be playing all eight games if we have to go to the tiebreaker. Or tiebreaker. Or as some others say, the tiebreaker, we will. I could hear you all along. Uh, but look, this is a good bracket even for the foreigners. When I look at it, I could see them absolutely bringing it to ace match. It's going to be really, really exciting. Who do you think wins this? What was that? Who wins? I would say Nurture wins, Showtime wins, Neeb wins, TY wins, Special wins, Sue wins. Uh, Darker Scarlet is a little bit of a toss-up. I could see either person taking that. Yeah. And then like Innovation Serral, I would say Innovation probably wins. Okay. I'm so I could, see, I could see four wins. And I mean, some of that will go wrong, of course, yeah. but yeah. There is a lot of potential, but it's also one of these days where it could go all the other way around. And yeah. In the end, it's only one or two of the World All-Stars winning. But I think it's going to be fun. I mean, how can you not get excited over these eight matches and then knowing that the Grand Finals will be happening after that? So oh, sick. Man. You know, I, I think that um, just seeing how well the non-Koreans did play, even though they didn't advance, the fact that they showed really close games, a lot of them going all the way to Game 5, we could definitely have a lot of these guys take off a game against a Korean player, maybe even the upset of the century. Now we are going to go to an interview with the captain. Capitan. The Capitan, thank you, of the non-Korean team. It's going to be Stefano. I believe that's ready now. One of the greatest minds of the non-Korean scene. One of the most greatest personalities. Citizens. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that interview will be done a by legend. So Jung, my bro Jung from a different Mo Jung. So Jung, take it away. <laughs> wow. Hello, guys, and welcome to GSL versus the world. And before we start the semifinals, look who we have here. Ilya Saturi Stefano, please welcome him with warm hands. Thank you, thank you. This is the head coach for World All Stars. 여러분 안녕하세요, 임소정 그리고 스테파노 감독님 오시게 되었는데요. 명성은 익히 들어서 알고 있습니다. 이렇게 직접 만나 뵙게 되어서 무척 영광인데요. It's an honor to have you here. How do you feel to be in the studio? I feel absolutely great. I am in Korea, the place where there is the best food the best game, the best drinks, that's everything I need to be happy, I think. I think it's the best game, the best game, the best thing to come to the world. It's very fun. It's been the first time you visited the studio after 2013 GSL Code S. How do you feel to be here? First, uh, GSL Code S 2013, you were the first visit to the studio. How do you feel? It's an absolute blast. It's good to be surrounded by the fans again, seeing great games, seeing the best players in the world. It's been a long time. I've been a bit disconnected from those people. But now I'm going back to the roots, which feels good. Uh, first, I felt a bit of a feeling in the world, but in the studio, I felt a bit of a feeling in the studio, so I felt very good. Uh, you're now the head coach for the World All-Stars, but do you feel any pressure about it? Uh, I feel a little bit pres uh, pressured, yes, because uh, we have a huge task to achieve here. Huge, but not impossible. I think we can do great things, and we have a lot of things to prove to the world, and mainly to Korea, so they start respecting us. Uh, first, I'm wearing a special role. Can you say this? repeat the last part? So uh, we have a lot of things to prove to the world and Korea, and especially Korea, so they start respecting us. Uh, 한국, 특히 한국에게 이렇게 증명할 것이 많기 때문에 굉장히 어깨, uh, 굉장히 이렇게 어려운 임무를 띄고 있다는 생각이 들고 있습니다. And about the GSL Stars team, Nesty is the head coach. Uh, GSL All Stars 감독이 임재덕 감독님이에요. And both of you guys were the kings in Wings of Liberty. 되게 자유의 날개에서 날아다녔어요. 어떻게 생각하세요? 
Uh, we were both kings, now we are retired kings, but what we have is an army to fight for us. And I think uh, I know how to motivate my troops the best. 은퇴한 왕이지만 이제는 저희를 대신에 싸워줄 용병이 있고 어떻게 기용할 수 있는지 알기 때문에 괜찮은 것 같습니다. I, I do have special things prepared for them, special tricks. I can't speak about that uh, on air in front of everybody, but uh, they will be on top. My team will be on top. 어 방송에서는 공개할 수 없지만 어 준비한 특별한 무기가 있기 때문에 기대하셔도 좋을 것 같습니다. Uh, for GSL vs. the world, we, we're going to have semi-finals soon uh, with Neeb and TY and Dark and Sue. Who do you think will advance? Uh, I want to say TY. TY, that's uh, my logic speaking, but my heart would be uh, with a foreigner for sure. Okay. Uh, 일단 4강에 누가 진출할 것 같냐 여쭤봤는데요. 머릿속으로는 전태한 선수가 진출할 것이라고 이야기를 했는데 마음속으로는 그래도 외국인 선수를 응원하고 있다고 계시네요. Do you know that you have a lot of Korean fans? And do you have any thoughts on participating for the next GSL? Uh, I do know I have Korean fans and I love them really much. It is the crowd which is the most, most passionate I think about StarCraft 2 I've met so far in my whole career. And uh, when it comes to trying another GSL, I think uh, my time has passed. I am, uh, I am just done, sadly, <laughs> back to uh, studying. But it's always uh, it's good to come back and try to uh, participate here and there. Try my best to uh, give the maximum I can give to the community, as little as that is. 네, 한국 팬들을 굉장히 사랑하고 있지만 어, 제 때는 지난 것 같고 그래도 일단 커뮤니티에게 제가 할수 있는 것들은 최선을 다할 수 있도록 하겠습니다. But thank you again so much for participating in this interview and please do you have anything else to say for tomorrow? I do. Please tomorrow try to be the maximum amount of people coming to Gwangu-hi University. It's going to be an absolute blast and insane, insane games. And nobody should miss that. I'm going to be there from morning to night, trying to uh, enjoy the beauty of StarCraft. And again, uh, always a pleasure to be in Korea, and thank you for welcoming me here. 어, 내일 아침부터 저녁까지 저도 경희대학교에 있을 거기 때문에 여러분도 꼭 와서 그 스타크래프트의 아름다움을 즐기시길 바라겠고요. 저를 이렇게 환영해 주셔서 여러분 너무 감사합니다. 지금까지. 감사합니다. <웃음> 감사합니다. He is such a legend. He is. I love Stefano. Um, I think that uh, I can't cheer hard enough. Cannot cheer hard enough for that guy. Stefano is so handsome. Such a great guy. Oh, I didn't turn around. And it's amazing he did that interview after only two hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the legend of Stefano does continue. This is true. When we walked to the event this morning, he asked us if we want to go out for a drink. We're like, Stefano, you know? Stefano, it's, we got a cast <laughs> yeah. over, buddy. it's 11. He's like, oh, I didn't know it was that late already. I was like, late? It's early, <laughs> man. <laughs> All yeah. right. Uh, the semifinal match that we have coming up here, we really have to admit these are actually the four best players. If you had to make a list maybe in the before game. this tournament, maybe yeah. Yeah, in the game, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's Kevin was talking about this while we're sitting over there. It's uh, two of the absolute best Terrans. Certainly, I think T.Y. is like the the hip, not even hipster, but he's like the power pick. He's like, no, this is the, actually the best guy. When he yeah. plays his best, he is the best. Stats, probably the best Protoss. Sue, a lot of people make the jokes. Even he himself making some jokes here at this tournament talking about taking second place so much. But uh, he's the best Zerk. I mean, taking second yeah. in GSL that many times is actually incredible. That, that's that's a, a stunning um, accomplishment. Absolutely. Yeah. This is an amazing top four. I feel like every now and then we're at tournaments and you see a top four and you're like, okay, that's pretty unique and the way this all played out. But I don't think that would happen again. This is a top four. You look at it. Obviously, we had a really close series and they had to battle hard and go really deep. But this is not a shocking top four. This is not a top four no, you say, this we'll is the never, one. Yeah, we'll never see this again. Yeah. Like these yeah, four players are true. just amazing. What's, what's amazing is how we got here, though. I'm yeah. looking at some of these guys, and I'm like, they had to come back to get to this place. And yeah. I know that we're harping on it, but, you know, I, I got excited. about. I always get excited about foreigners taking on the Koreans. We're heading into the late season this year, BlizzCon. This has given me some hope, but they still have more to go. I don't want to see Showtime lose 2-3 to three again. Heartbreakingly, after two games, he was probably ahead losing that way at BlizzCon. That would just be gut-wrenching. We are going to get ready and go into our first semifinal match. This is going to be Stats versus Innovation.
they come, boys. There they are. This is an ultimate matchup right here, right? These are like two macro players, two long game players, stats, the best defensive Protoss, innovation, the machine himself. Yeah. Doesn't need any other nicknames. It's yep. just innovation. Wow, he, he looked happy, that guy. Did yeah. you see a smile? Stats gave him a little squeeze on the shoulder and said, it's all right, man. They'll, they'll go away when the screen comes up in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> they'll go away. Oh, no, it's man. great. Do we, joke, have, joke do we have the uh, predictions here before we go into this match? I, I think this could be a 24-minute match, Nick. I'm Think thinking so? it could go it could go a little bit longer. Yeah. I'm predicting about 290 probes are going to be made total in all the games, okay. no matter how it, it, it comes out. That's okay, I'll keep track of that for you. Okay, thank 290 you. 290 probes? Yeah. Yeah. If you nail this one, I'll build this Kevin, Oh, my please. God, if I nail this no one. No more jokes, dude. We're trying yeah. to be serious here. <laughs> Dan, on a serious note, what APM will they average between the two of them? 700. Good answer. That was a great answer. A little save, though. I, if I had to have a... Uh, save. <laughs> I, actually, right. I actually think Stats can, can take this. I think Stats is, is not... I think he's got a good here. shot. Don't I think you? he's got it. To be fair, chance. Innovation could also take it as well. Yeah. Think? We'll see? just have to see. There's a good chance. The one truth of, is, one guys, of these two will make it to the final. As great yeah. as we are, we, in fact, do not have the answers. We are people just like you. And the only way to truly find out is to make them play yeah. at it, least five games. It's a, it's a hard one to predict, but I think Innovation, man, that's my pick for going into this. Yeah. Like, what, what score, Tulsi? Huh? What score? Uh, innovation, three to one. Yeah. Three to one, wow. I'm thinking one. three, two stats here. He looks so good I'm against Beyond. Yeah, he, really good. he was looking pretty on fire, and it's not like stats was looking bad per se, but his PVT style I don't feel like matches up perfectly against Innovation. Innovation just is like, I have so many units, and Stats is like, I stop attacks, oh wait, you just have lots of units. You ever think it's weird how we say someone's on fire, and that's generally a really bad thing, but we use it to describe something really good? Yeah, that is a little bit weird. I, I like the way Mr. Bitter used to say it, like a man on fire. That's what yeah, it was say. in case And then he'd all be like, it. he'd be like, I don't know, Kev. <laughs> you know, like, oh god, I miss Mr. Bitter. He's the best. <laughs> don't Guys, we all. This is game number one in the semifinal, Stats versus Innovation. And Control Roddy, take it away. Thank you, guys. Really hyped up for this. This is your first semifinal, a big one. Uh, it cannot be emphasized enough that we do believe these are four probably, I mean, you can even take out the probable. These are, pro well, it's hard to say it without it. They are the best. Starting off in the lower right-hand side, the Protoss player, it is. Splice Stats. I had an amazing series earlier today against another Terran player special. Was down 0-2, was almost out. Can never count him out. On the left top side, we're looking at the main base of the machine. No other words needed. We call him Innovation. It's weird, Roddy, because I almost do the incorrect, it's not appropriate to do this, but I look at Innovation's match against Bion, and I look at stats against Special, and stats survive Special, to be yep. honest with you. It, it was, uh, he looked very mortal. He looked good, don't get me wrong. But it was like it was special that kind of uh, lost that match, as opposed to like stats, you know, really putting himself forward, be like, no, I, I, I'm, I'm conquering here. Whereas innovation against Beyond, it felt like Beyond tried everything he could to disrupt innovation, and none of it was really working. Like, yeah, he dropped the game, but it was innovation looked so good, so good. It's a different matchup, but still, it, the weird kind of math I look at this and just the the image I get. Yeah, Stats did have an amazing comeback though, and that should give him some momentum. And don't forget that it wasn't just like, he was down 0-2 and then he kind of ruffle stumped special three games in a row. Like, no, game three. He was yeah. incredibly close to being defeated as well. Uh, I even saw him in the elevator. He looked at me, he's like, oh, so close, almost yeah. dead. I was like, yeah, I, I know, but it's still a fantastic series. I really enjoyed it. I'm excited for this one. I truly believe that Stats can make this very, very competitive. Uh, historically, these two match up very evenly. They both won nine series against each other. But Jeff, I don't know if you remember the finals of the Intox Stream Masters Giyongi last December. That was one of the most one-sided finals we've ever seen. Innovation <laughs> beat stats 4-0, all like 9, 10, 11, 12 minute games. And we all looked at each other like, well, if it's good, we tell you guys it's good. This just wasn't that good. It was great from Innovation, not that great from stats. But since then, they had multiple series and they were all a lot closer. So I believe, I believe in a good series. Hope so. It's better for us, of course, as casters and just fans of the game. We do have an interesting opening here from Innovation, a little bit different. It's gonna be that reactor barracks with a third CC very quickly. Um, this map, 
gets a little bit top and down. It can it can favor the expansions like this. Yeah, I like this actually because it's very hard to do a lot of damage oh. with your regular, let's say, six marine, one wind mine drop because it just takes a very long time for medevacs to make their way across the map. Okay. Now, obviously, you can proxy stuff. Yes, you sorry. could, but the robo, that, that, that's like the safe flag from the Protoss as well. This is I'm going to start off this best of five in the semifinal. Very safe. I want to scout out what you're doing. I want to defend, deflect, and then, you know, take a third. Unfortunately for him, the greed has already been gained. Uh, innovations turn that wheel. Yep. No, this is an excellent opening on paper, at least for innovation. Doesn't mean this game is over by no. any means, but uh, if Stats would know what we knew right now, he wouldn't be dropping those gates. He'd be dropping another Nexus and then get the gates. Yeah. But he doesn't know it yet. He's obviously worried about a potential mind drop, maybe even a Cyclone with a bunch of Marines, all the things that can catch you off guard yeah. in a TVP. You know, you bring up kind of an interesting point too. Uh, the scouting of Protoss, it's been very Stargate reliant. You're not seeing things like a sentry mix in here. It is gonna, like the first scout is going to end up being um, maybe shaded adepts or it's going to be like the observer literally flying across the map. Both of those are very slow respectively. Whereas if you open up Oracle, you're already kind of figuring out what you're facing. That's a big part of the reason why it's so strong in the meta. All of that in this case, and I do agree with you, Roddy, it's it's leaning in innovation's favor. He's getting away with something right now. There's there's no reactive like, oh no, you did that? Well, I'll add nine gates and all in. That, that's not a real thing. Nope. Especially against the blink opening as well. Blink openings, obviously in the old days, we just think like, oh my god, it's gonna go blink, stock roll in. That is not the case anymore. If you see blink, yeah. it's a defensive opening. Blink is meant to shut down Medivac, shut down the Liberator, micro your way out of Cyclones. Now Stats is gonna spot that CC. He's obviously going to drop another expand immediately. Yep. And I just wonder, Jeff, what is it going to be after Blink? Colossus is a, a very likely possibility, okay. but I would love to see Charge after Blink, and that would personally make me very happy because I think this is a really good map for it. I agree with you. I like Charge, but I think that's the that's kind of the wild man response, right? Like I think a lot of Koreans have shown that they they favor kind of the the safer middle path. Charge is like a I think I'm getting a timing against me, and this is my counter to it. But just in a bread and butter matchup like this. They tend to go Glaive just because they like that kind of composition as an anchor, I feel. But we'll have to see. He might go to Fast Claws or something like that, but he does scout. He gets good intel off that Observer. And as you predicted, Roddy, he is going to go for the third immediately after that. Probably maybe a double Forge as well. I think yeah. he can absolutely get away with that. There we do have that Robo Bay, one Forge being warped in. I'm curious to see if he's going to keep it at one. It seems to be the case. Now, what is going to be very important for Stats is that he starts getting active with his Blink Stalkers. And when I say active, I don't mean Blink in the main, try to kill something. Yeah. I mean, the moment that Innovation wants to push out, you want to chip away at a matter of fact. You yep. want to shave off a couple of Marines because you buy need time. to buy time. Because Innovation's 30 CC is obviously giving him a pretty big economic boost early on. So you need to buy a little bit of time before your Colossus are at. You're exactly right. And I do like Warprism here as well, even if he doesn't get too crazy with this, just as a as like a very strong signal that the Terran should hang back, buys some more time for that third to kick in. We have some pretty critical techs going up here. Some Blink Stalkers showing up, and of course, this is not a real threat. It's more just to get a gauge of what he's facing. So he's a large Bioforce, by the way, yeah. a couple of Medivacs, and that's a scary army. But he does have the three sentries at home, so that's yeah. nice. Uh, obviously, he can always drop a couple of Force Fields. Very so risky map, too, by the way. Like, that Bioforce, unless it's getting picked up by Medivacs, isn't going to really threaten anything. The ramps themselves act as a defense. No, but that's why I love the opening uh, from Innovation. It's just unlikely that you can really catch stats of guard. I love this by stats. The very first moment that Innovation moves out, this War Prism shows up. It's going to be yeah. as annoying as possible with these two adapts. He almost, I want to say almost has plus one, but it's actually only halfway done. He never, doesn't have plus one yet, as the Observer does get sniped. But it's nice, though. It buys time for stats, and that is exactly what he needs, because you need to get a couple Colossus up. It's also, it literally, uh, he's showing it off. He's trying to encourage innovation to be, like, very concerned about it, want to hang back, leave some forces, build some missile threats, all these kind of things that cut into the bulk of his army. Um, Innovation's so savvy, isn't quite doing it just yet. He is leaving some stuff behind, obviously, but he goes out, takes the towers, makes sure that he's clear to really power up on that third base. And the thing that's so scary about Innovation, he's not known for his incredible multitask harass. Of course, he's a top tier player, he can do that, but he's known for his machine-like macro. This guy can, can produce armies that just feel bigger than anybody else. It's like, how did, you know, he's not missing depots, he's churning out units, and the game's getting to that point in time. Yeah, and the sickest thing as well is that innovation, you see him trade, you see him lose units, and you're like, well, he's been taking heavy losses, and then his he's supply is like, supply. He's like 184, and it's like, oh my oh. god, where did these units come from? So obviously we had a slow start here to our first semifinals, but Jeff, things are about to get spicy, they're about to get fun, as innovation is lurking around, he's yeah. gonna try to find an opening. 
you know, we've been talking up innovation, but to be fair here too, Stats, who had a little bit of a, a quick one pulled on him, is equalizing here. He's yeah. getting that second forge. He's uh, not going into Templar Tech just yet, which is kind of nice, actually, just focusing on the Colossus. Small, what do you got? small mistake by Inno. He made double armory. I'm at least assuming that that is a mistake. Well, it's it's a natural reaction to me saying he has perfect macro. He has, to, he's, you know, we need something here to prove me wrong. And he's going to get a fusion core as well, so very fast lib range, something we didn't see come out of TY. I like it. I think lib range is fantastic against any Protoss army. It's just a great upgrade. That doesn't have Tempest, yeah. yeah. As long as there's no Stargate on the map, it's even better. You can be super annoying in mineral lines as well. I mean, Tempest are a great response to it, but you just don't often see Tempest like uh, before the, the Liberators have their range. It's like a reaction to it, so there's still a window of time where they're strong. Mm -hmm. He's just sharking around over here. A probe did see that southern force, so... Uh oh, these oh. units are a little bit out of position. One Colossus is very oh, exposed. Oh, he died for that laser, man. <laughs> he took that shot and was like, no, 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 no. Your only chance was to run forever. But he uh, loses a Colossus. Get in a Disruptor as a follow-up. I love this. If you can control that, which I don't say that as a weird caster hype thing. It's actually quite difficult to control everything very well. But if you can get off a couple meaningful disruptor shots, it really transforms that whole army. Yeah, especially because he's getting high Templars already as well. Three Liberators at once, though, being produced. Storm is on the way now for stats. Both players still just feeling each other out. Obviously, innovation is okay with how things have gone so far yeah. since he got a free Colossus, and that's like the only true meaningful thing that happened in this game, other than both players just macroing up. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, stylistically, looking at these two go at it, stats is not a timing-oriented Protoss. He's not... An all-inner. He's not known for his blazing micro. He, too, wants a defensive macro game. And he's going against Innovation, who, for many years, has won a lot of money doing exactly that. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, Stats has got all the right tools, but I still just feel nervous. It somehow feels like this is exactly what Innovation wants. Uh, a couple of disruptive shots do go forward. One of them connects, but oh, all geez. these Liberators are going to see each other here on the top side. No Storm yet, Jeff. And that's it. Yeah, I think this Nexus is pretty damn it's super dead. dead. Cancel it. Cancel. What? And that's... There's more that can happen. He runs in here in the natural. The warp in is meaningless. I think those are stalkers. No, they're adepts, but even so, buys him a little bit of time. He's going to go ahead and probably pick up and go to the main. He can safely do that. Why is it much, of course? Shouldn't there be one? Might get the Templar. I would archives. love to see like one or two high Templars here just to feedback those yeah. manifacts would make it a little bit easier as well. Obviously, nice little pick up there for innovation. Now, I do still think that Stats is going to be able to max out here. So it's not the end of the world. He's not dead. He's right. not broke as a joke. But this has all just gone very nice. And with Liberator range, and quite a few Liberators out there already, Jeff. Yeah. I'm starting to get a little worried here for stats. Well, I think what we saw, though, is the big concern of that tech. Like, he can, if he can get to a meaningful spot, Siege, and, and things underneath that Liberation Zone can start attacking a Nexus, that's it. God. I mean, that's the worst place to be. Look at that amount of Liberators. You're going to blink in that? No, you won't. You're going to do anything in that, Kevin. No. Blink? Forget it. What, what are you going to do? Nothing. You can only avoid. You can only counterattack. That's going to be forced to take a very awkward fight here. The Disruptors, they're being forgotten behind. That would be his chance to crack this. He does a good storm there, but he's taking so much damage. The Sockers are down to like three or four. The Colossus are gone, and there's still Liberators there, Kevin. Yep, and when Drop is going to show up in the main as well, Overcharge does you know, deal with a couple of these Marauders, no, but this Fort no. base is going to be on a lot of fire again. The Liberator count is simply too high. The NTR is not good enough for stats, and Innovation is going to pick up a very quick and clean game number one. I like the word there, clean, Kevin. I think it, it just... Everything. He, he pushes the fourth, gets a, gets a kill. I would call it a cancel, but he actually killed the Nexus. Yep. He does a drop, it wins space. It doesn't do huge damage, but it just occupies the attention of stats. And then that upgrade, the Liberators, the, just the number of Liberators, like we talked about. Once he gets to a few, few places, like going up that ramp, it makes everything stats do look bad. You know, stats is known to be a very defensive protos. We keep saying this over and over again, and innovation kind of capitalized on it. Because what you do against that many Liberators is that you jump on the army before the Liberators are right. sieged up. If you don't have to step into the circles, well obviously if nine of them siege up, a couple of them they will still get shots off, but it's a very winnable fight for mm -hmm. stats as long as he has good focus fire, has reinforcements coming in, etc. The moment nine Liberators just siege up, because Protoss is just defending between yeah. the second and third phase, well, forget about it. This is never going to break that. Uh, and you know, you're exactly right. That is how you engage that. But I still find, while we're describing that, that it favors the Terran player. It, it, it's up to them. Like, if they can get to a meaningful spot, like we saw where he's attacking the fourth, maybe you kill the Liberators, but you probably lose the base as well, and you're going to trade out. But in this other situation here, too, he wasn't even getting a base with that, but he was forcing an engagement that stats came in late to. And when he came in late to it, he lost the fight. I mean, it just favors the Terran player so strongly. Mm -hmm. 
Well, let's see if things will go a little bit better for Protos in game number two here on Epistle. Representing Splice, it is. Splice Let the voice do it, Kevin. It's been a long day, Jeff. It's been a long day with a lot of very exciting and fun games for StarCraft, though. It has, man. It's been a good time. I hope you guys are having a good time on the stream as well. And this guy, speaking of good times, that last game, I guarantee you, he's not smiling, but he's feeling on the inside. It is. Innovation. Looking good. He beat down on Beyond. Beyond his number one fan, so of course everyone won in that match. Looking scary. And in this game number one, against stats, we were talking about it. You just mentioned it. I don't know. Stats, if you're going to play defense against Innovation, you got to take some, some form of a risk. Do an early Stargate. Do an early Mothership. I don't know. Just something crazy. But if you just want to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, four base versus four base, I'm going to pick Innovation every time. Yeah. Don't forget, obviously, the Triple CC did give Innovation slightly more sure. money to work with. And they got a good pick off on the Colossus and stuff. Abyssal is a very, very different map. We keep talking about it. There are so many different pushes, very popular from Terran that will siege up at the bottom of the natural of yeah. Protoss. There are so many different versions that I can't even name all of them, but a lot of them include tanks, a lot of them include maybe a bunker and a missile turret as well, and it's very possible that we'll see something like that come out of innovation. Agreed. We have a Marine coming off that barracks, by the way, so that is a bit interesting. Usually a factory is why that would be. You know, if I was that, I'd be a tiny bit sad, though. Because oh, it's their CC again, I guarantee you. You think so? Yeah, man. No. I, On so, Abyssal? Yeah, dude. So Tasteless touched me the other day, and it gave me the ability to see the future. I don't believe it. I think you're wrong. If I am, though, can we blame Tasteless? Of course we can. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I feel most comfortable. We have that. been surrounded by him quite a bit. Is this, if I was stats, what I want to nah, say is like... Nah, factor. I was totally wrong. <laughs> I mean, Tasteless wrong. <laughs> you know, in the previous game, Stargate openings are so popular, Jeff, and almost everybody does it. And then you're asking your, your stats, right? You're like, well, Stargate is good, but the Terrans are very good against Stargate as well. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open up very defensively, blink, observer. I'm going to shut everything mm -hmm. down, and I'm going to get an advantage like that. And that, exactly that game, your opponent goes 3cc, and you're like, oh my god. And yep. obviously you scout it very late, because observers are slow, Ascension is a large map. So now stats is like, you know what? I'm going to go back to Stargate. Maybe he would have done that regardless. Don't, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying this is a... Uh, 100% sure thing, but obviously he's going to be uh, slightly annoyed by that because it's like, oh, come on, the one game where I think I do something that's very good against what's popular uh -huh. for the Terrans, I get blind counted by a triple CC, which is just the worst thing to go up against with Blink and a Robo. I love it. I, this is part of the reason why StarCraft is the best game ever. It's just, you know, we make a lot of jokes, uh, myself included, about my fairly unspectacular professional career as a StarCraft II player, but a big part of the reason why was I suffered in the mental part of the game by a lot. Every build I picked was like, it didn't feel right. I didn't play a best of series very well. If I played as the underdog, I, I made too many weird, like, well, I didn't really practice this, but this is what I'm going to do because this is probably my best chance. Like, it's such a tough game mentally, and it's so cool to see these guys at this level when they do that build. And, and it, it's easy for us as fans to look at it and be like, oh, no, we just got lucky. No, we did not. Not every time. Like, a lot of times it's by design, and I love the way they play these best of series. Yep, this time the uh, Reaper of Innovation did spot the Oracle, so he knows that things are almost safe to say back to normal. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a Twilight opening, it's not that good anyway on Abyssal. I, I love that on uh, Ascension, I really don't fault stats for going for it. Just got unlucky that Innovation went for the Triple CC build. Let's see if he can get something done with the Oracles, Jeff. Yeah, and it's it's shaping up that he won't. Um, there's missile turrets already going down. There's a cyclone coming out of Viking. There's Marines in position. So it's a very defensive opening from Innovation. And for a lot of players, I would look at that and say, really bad for the Terran players. He's over committing to this. But I, I feel so comfortable in saying that Innovation very much so wants the game to go the distance. Because the longer it goes, the better he feels. It's an interesting little move out there. I don't think Seth is aware of it yet. But Seth does have three gateways, and he's also getting Phoenixes. So the Phoenix could potentially lift the Cyclone. Adapt to get on top of the Marines. Yeah. As long as if they fight, and obviously they are going to fight because Innovation is moving out with a lot of units. So what is very, very important here, this is the only thing that truly matters for stats, is make damn sure that your Adepts don't shoot at the Cyclone. It takes seven years to kill a Cyclone with your Adepts, but they're very yep. effective against Marines. Same amount of time Brad Pitt spent in Tibet is exactly how long it actually takes them to kill this. There's no pilot in place here, and this is kind of one of those things that I hope people remember I was complaining about this. There's no pilot at all. So he's just like, okay, you're going to have it. He's going to try to anchor right there. Bunker going down behind this. That bunker might as well be the doomsday clock. If it finishes, there's no chance of stopping this. Well, Stats has got to pretty much go for it. He starts losing one Adept already before the party started. The second Cyclone shows up as well. This Nexus no is starting to run very low on HP. He wants one more Phoenix. He's going to go for it right now. What did he lift but there? But nothing's attacking. 
Nothing's attacking. Goes for the pickup, but there's no follow-up. The bunker. Oh, man, is it not really finished? It just finishes oh one God. of the Cyclones so low in health. Somebody please shoot that Cyclone. Thank you. Oh my but God. the mothership dies. The Air Force dies. It might get the Cyclone, but even that, no chance. Don't forget about the Nexus. It's so low in The Landed Viking. Oh it's my. from the cinematic. No. no, shoot the Nexus. Now he wants to get as many stars as possible. There you go. He did it. Wow. Okay, good. And that's a dead base. So he can lose some of this stuff behind. He's going to salvage the bunker even. But there's so much committed to it by stats, he might just die. I mean, he's going to get a couple of defensive weapons here. Obviously, some of these units are low on HP for innovation. But oh, that's inno nice. Innovation showed oh mercy. He picked up the Viking. Well, I mean, those targets are going to get shot as well by the Cyclone. It's going to take a lot of damage immediately. And things are going from bad to worse for Stats, who's in so much trouble. And Jeff, he might actually, well, I mean, he's going to lift the Cyclone here. But he's, oh my god, he's in so much trouble. The poor Stalker actually had a moment like, you want me to shoot it? Yeah, he will end up killing this dog. And he does immediately build his third Nexus. But look at the damage. Two Oracles, two Phoenix, a Mothership Core. Once one pylon there on the north side changes everything. I one know. overcharge, and it's a completely different fight. It's a completely different game. And I'm starting to have flashbacks of that final of the Intel Extreme Masters as once again, it just feels that everything that could potentially go wrong for stats against innovation on a big stage is going wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, they're fairly equal in, in uh, workers. The army yeah. difference is kind of the big deal there. And the tech, man. Like I know. He's way behind. I'm just I'm doing that thing where if he does come back and win, it looks like I knew it all along. Yeah. If he comes back and wins this one. You need a shoe? No, I'm going to get a Jeff tattoo. Oh, sick. Yeah. I'm going to get, like, your fire pop popular emoji, you know, the funny face. Yeah. I'll get it on my ankle. The thing? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a pretty good tattoo, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, I know, right? I've, you can have worse tattoos. You could have worse. Imagine you can get, like, a Rotterdam tattoo or something. <laughs> <laughs> Five extra gateways being wiped in for stats. Now, with charge, maybe you can somehow See, now that Viking, when it lands, you're in a world of trouble, dude. Get out. Get out of here. <laughs> and he's just doing everything he can. Well, two probes already. He might actually get the stalker. He's going to kill too. the stalker too, oh dude. My God. The and cinematic it. saw this. I love it. Oh my God, this army is massive. I mean, charge is halfway done, Jeff. Maybe with charge and a big warping, stats can push his army back. But since he has that base, that no. makes it extra awkward as well because innovation can take the high ground. And then you can mine of this base. These probes are all going to have to be evacuated. The, the double medevac is the one that, that says no. This army's going to show up. It's going to hit from the high ground up there. Maybe that army can die, but then the medevacs hit the natural. Okay, or, maybe alternatively, the Phoenix, yes. the Phoenix pick it up and we are... All right. You know, if he gets a full medevac of Eunice, Jeff, will. the dream is alive. But now he does have that high ground position that I was talking about. Good lift, oh though. Oh, my goodness. This is well done by stats. Get the wit of mine. Uh oh, Jeff. I feel like I'm going to get your face on my lap. It's not a bad tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad tattoo. <laughs> uh oh, be careful if you send those probes back. Innovation obviously making a small error there. He's still in a great position. But that went very well for Stats. He survived. Yep. He's got charge now. He lost six probes, but it could have been a lot no, worse. No, it could have been worse. If that army doesn't get picked up by the Phoenix and they drop down behind that natural. It's game over. It's really, really bad. Really bad. Innovation should probably stop sending out single medevacs, Jeff, because you know there are the Phoenix count is quite high on the side of stats, and Innovation is still in a comfortable position. But yeah. if you throw away two more medevacs full of units, then uh, it starts to become believable. Yep, it really does. Innovation also powering up that third. I'd love to see uh, a fourth though. It's one of the ways that I think he could really cement his advantage here. Poor stats just sends his Phoenixes into the wrong direction, which allows these Marines to enter his main base. Now there's a couple of Widow Mines in the mix as well. Good revelation there though. Gets all the mines, overcharges being used, but Innovation oh. is like, well, I'm doing plenty in your main. I am not even worried. He's going to pick up some Marauders Tanked as well. Tanked on the Marauder too. Yep. I mean, that drop was always going to get killed, but it killed uh, six-ish probes occupy the attention he's gonna jump forward here no more overcharge couple of zealots are on hold position so they get picked off immediately force, force fields are decent but i don't think the zealot numbers are high enough so innovation just has way too much right now to deal with yep and he's gonna try to fall back to, but to what he's afraid of the widow mines there's not much of an answer for him the things can come forward they're gonna pick up what they can and he's doing an okay job but ultimately i think it's a numbers game here comes innovation and there goes stats 2-0 in favor of the machine well, I feel like I've seen this before. I feel like I've casted this before. It's funny because since that final in Gionki, they've had a couple of very close series and Stats won a couple of times yeah. as well in very meaningful matches against Innovation. But so far, there's no other way to put it. It's all Inno. 
He's just dominating this series. Well, that's a real thing. Sometimes people crawl into the heads of others and they're just like, uh, I don't know what to do against this guy. I feel like Stats is... It's kind of interesting because Innovation has had two very different openings in these two games yep. and both have worked flawlessly. That's where you can kind of see the mental game. And then you look at Stats and Stats like opened overly conservatively game one. Game two he falls back on his normal thing, but he was like fighting for his life the entire game with his normal thing. Uh, it's that first push right near the Nexus, the, yeah. the moment that goes wrong. Stats knew it as well, obviously in the semifinals of GSL versus the world. You're not just going to tap out if you lose a couple of units, but Stats knew that he was in a world of trouble. Got a cheeky medevac here and there, but that was not going to be enough. Stats already made one miraculous comeback earlier today against Special. He was down 0-2 and he was in a lot of trouble in Game 3, but he somehow turned it around and advanced to the semifinals. If he does it twice in one day, Jeff, I might get a set tattoo. Wow, <laughs> that's also not a bad tattoo. Yeah, you know that guy. very uh, that, ha that happy uh, emoji face. Uh, yeah, that he has. it's adorable. He's got a good smile. He's yeah, a yeah, that's the best. I like his stream too. He's a good streamer. You guys should yep. check him out. Yeah, sets is the best. It, well, he's one of the best. And jeez, oh, there's no segue to save that. In the lower right hand side, needing your support, down 0-2, but still a great Protoss. It is. Splice stats. Do what you think Tasteless would do to, in, to introduce the next one. What do you think he would say? Oh, here. <laughs> in the left up side of Odyssey, spawning in the red, it is. Innovation. That's what makes Tasteless so great is his range. You know, his GG is a is a feral, just a growl from deep inside himself. But when he when he does his radio voice, mm -hmm. he does this weird like it's it's he's one of the best. Rotterdam. He's actually a, a fantastic Terran player, and I have no idea who's going to win this match. You know, like the, it, he does a radio a voice. A little similar there. to his brother there, though, Jeff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sean, too. Sean? What, what I like from uh, Tasteless is that he can make like seven jokes in a row, and then he's like, oh, okay, uh, we actually have uh, <laughs> Barracks uh, finishing up. And, uh, <laughs> yep. I love it. It's so good. The Plot Brothers, man. They're the best. They're pretty good. Okay, so here's stats mixing up a little bit, by the way. Uh, no, actually, I think that's just a one-gate expand. I think mm -hmm. he's done that each time, so never mind. Let's see what innovation decides to do. And base Stargate, I'm sure. It's his, you know, it's his thing. Yeah, it would be, uh, unless that's decide to go for some crazy all-in, but do you really want to go for a crazy all-in when you're down 0-2 and you're afraid that, you know, if that falls flat on its face and you eh. truly have just an, a horrible semifinals and you There's don't want There's a yes that. and no, though. Like, the logic you just pointed out, and this is why I sucked as a pro gamer, mm -hmm. is exactly exactly why you would do that. It's like, that would be really bad, wouldn't it? So no one would expect that, would they? And then, cheeky pylon. I think this is just going to be the regular proxy Stargate. Now, I do think that Innovation is probably going to scout for it, as he's just been on point throughout the entirety of this tournament so robo. far. Do a if he goes, nah. You know that Robo All-In that uh, that Hostum did at Holster Cup with the four Immortals yeah. against Beyond? And honestly, actually. It's good, actually. It's good. It's just, it's oof, very much so an All-In. No. Project Innovation found that immediately. Okay, now this is, I think, a lot better for Stats. Innovation is going to go back to his old tactics of game number one. Yep. He's going to open up with a triple CC. But this is so much better for Stats, because this time he can proxy an Oracle. He can probably do... This is super greedy, Jeff. There's barely going to be any anti-air. I like this a lot for Stats. He can not only do economic damage, he can also spot it immediately and actually expand on the other side of the map. I don't think it could be much better for Stats. My God. That Reaper, by the way. It doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter. It does matter. Yeah, it matters a little you bit. You immediately make an engineering bay, maybe a third barracks. Well, it's going to be in time, though. Where's that probe? Don't tell me the probe is all the way home. Of course. You have to go back to mining, you know? <laughs> I love that petulant grenade. Oh, I love it. Just it chucks it out there. Like, five more damage. Well, that eBay, Jeff, is still going to be a little bit late. And I honestly don't think that innovation can protect both mineral lines. No, no. You, you leave the natural empty. Go up into the main, put six marines there, right? Uh, what do you do with the natural? Wait until you have more Marines to go defend it. Uh, so you would evacuate it? Sure. You're opening 3 CC. He only has to survive, right? Mm, yeah, just or just build a missile turret, I guess. Well, the Oracle is going to fly towards the natural. Marines are a little bit out of position. Let's see how many SCV stats can get here. Good reaction time, though, by Innovation. So far, it's a single one. But now these Marines are out of position again. Is the missile turret done? In the main is it done? Oh, my gosh, it's not. It's very close. Uh, wow, Innovation Dude. handled that so well. Jesus. I'm disgusted. And I think Coach Jeff and Control Robinson in innovation on team. I could actually, you know, he doesn't have. No, he has a team. Never mind. 
in the future when he's on Team uh, The Thing, I would be like, yeah, you just evacuate the probes or the SUVs from the natural. And then wait for them to start to finish in the main, walk the Marines down there, take the natural. That scout was really sick by Inno because it did allow him to get those uh, missile turrets off in time. But stats, at least, this is still better than Ascension to Aya because he's able to go up to three bases a lot faster himself. Yeah. He still has the Oracles, he can attack the army, he can maybe fly in from an awkward angle, still get a couple of SUVs that are mining from a refinery. It's not the damage that I think Stats was hoping for and all the other Protoss players out there and yeah. everybody that wants to see game four, and maybe five, but it's still a lot better than Ascension. It is, it is. I I hate to be the, just the Debbie Downer. I'm just, I'm so on board with innovation. I think he, you know, it's funny because we, we have all the stats. We come into turners, we talk about heads up. We talk about how they're doing. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes you can really just boil it down to how people are playing right now. It, it's kind of a cop out because it makes, it, it's more interesting to talk about how they're doing in their career, what it means, that kind of thing. But innovation in this tournament and how he's looked right now, this guy's going to win the tournament. Like who's stopping him? Uh, TY could always stop him in a TVT. You okay. think so? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. He's going to revenge very good. his fallen brother. I would always believe in TY and a TVT. But don't count Neve stats almost out got yet. TY, though, man. He yeah, but that's him. a different, different ballgame, Jeff. Different ballgame. Neve's really good, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially in PVT. That's but true. I think TY is an absolute... Well, TY did drop a few maps here and there in TVT lately as well. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that he's mm -hmm. not going to win. But I'm not saying that it's not over yet now. Five extra gateways being wiped in. Stats still has a good shot in this game. I really don't want to count him out of this game. He's down, excuse me, he's up like eight workers, which is decent. Down a little bit in army supply, but he's investing, you know, into his upgrades. He's getting resonating glaives. He's getting a whole bunch of extra gateways. Uh, robotics facility being added as well. It's obviously a solid opening for Eno, but I definitely would never, never You're count right. a Protoss out in this situation. You're right. Stats. I just wonder what adjustments he's going to make. He's, he's gotten just powered out in the other two games. It hasn't been like a lucky medevac drop killing a, a mysterious 20 probes. It's just yeah. been like engagement, fight, I'm better. And I see him getting the robo, I see him getting glaives, not really mixing things up. No storm first here or something like that. I, I don't know, what's the formula? He's just gonna wait and how, hope to outplay innovation? Well, he's gonna try to get a perfect shade off. You know, if the adepts can get okay. in a good position on the top of the Marines, the Marauder count ain't that high yet. Now there Maybe are some war prism stuff. Yeah, uh, he's absolutely. I think he's gonna open a prism immediately as soon as his robo is done, which it is right now. And nope, instead he's gonna get an observer first. But then we're probably gonna see a prism. Don't forget, I would love to see him take the gold as well. It's like I was saving up. I don't really yeah. know why Stats is taking his fifth and sixth gas right now. He's warping in eight adepts. I think all the way on the left side of the map. Ah, those slow warpings though, Jeff. Oh, no. You know, though, he's changing it up. I like this. Um, oh innovation. God. Innovation. Oh, look at him. He's like a sense some code, some code errors going yeah. on. Threat detected. He's like, that yeah. page did not load the same way as it did yesterday. And right now, Stats is like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> why? Why is there a Marine there right now? How does it, why? But at least the good news for Stats is that he has been building probes during all of this. Oh, that revelation. He got like the depot. You're like the, the really encouraging, loving mother of this match. I love it. He's like, the good news for him, after having that scouted, is he, you know, he can still make probes. <laughs> no, he has probes. But yeah. I, obviously that's bad, Jeff. I know. I know he wants to kill SUVs. I just, uh, I don't want to count him out yet. Second Robo is on the way, but there is this one devastating push that I know it's coming. I and know. hopefully for stats, he can like maybe trap some units in a stasis or anything. Yeah. He's got a robotics bay on the way, so if... Yeah, but a fight is going to happen before that. He needs right? a disruptor or two. Uh, he's going to go Colossus, no? He will. You're right. Yeah. I'm just. Ugh. I feel like innovation's muscling up right now. He's up in army supply. St he's been he's scouting around like he's doing the contingency plan. He's like, if I move out, are you going to drop me? Are you going to run in some adepts? I don't want any of that. As long as I feel confident that's not going to happen, here I come. A couple of sentries are right on the map as well, and that's nice. Obviously, guardian shield is incredibly important in some of these fights when you have a lot of adepts. You can land some force fields too. Person. Um, I would just love to see a couple stasis wards go down, Jeb. I yeah. really feel if he can trap 15 to 20 supply, it's going to be easy for stats to go up to three, four colossus, that's get a couple upgrades out as well. Yeah, and I think that's doable. That's something I've, you know, I wish we could have like a podcast after this and talk about it. But the double oracle against Terran, it's interesting. They're tagging forever, which y I feel like you can actually kind of do. By the way, with one oracle, mm -hmm. I feel like the advantage of two is infinite stasis. stasis wards and tagging. But we're not seeing it. We're seeing a couple, but they're like. Oh no, I'm being sieged. I'll make a stasis ward. And the yeah. Terran sees it, so they send one Marine forward. 
It's been kind of uninspiring that way, in my opinion. Yep. Uh, good tag though on this army. It's very important that stats keeps track. And at the same time, a couple of SCVs went down, so I think there's a little adept run. This by. is good though. Engaging yeah. outside of his base, pushing off the yeah. liberators, very good. Exactly what we were talking about, right? About what yeah. could have happened on Ascension. Obviously, that was a different scenario. Innovation is lurking. Innovation okay. is shocking, but he's not getting uh, the opening that he's looking no. for. And if the gold base gets established here by stats, all of a sudden I'm on Team Rotterdam and Team Stats, where yeah. I'm starting to really truly believe. Because then you can get the muscle. Then you can have the double forge, charge lot, four or five or so, Colossus. That's the kind of army that can get through the Liberators and win a fight. Yeah. And I'm starting to believe. Once again, though, this lip range is fast. I love oh, the difference. Three at a time, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah. I love the difference, though, between Innovation and TY. TY, like, almost never got it. He's a strong believer in the Vikings. And Innovation is like, yeah, that was, I guess, pretty cool play style. But I love Liberator oh. range, and I'm going to get a whole bunch of them. Now, once again, it's very, very, very important for stats that whatever big fight happens, please make it happen before all the Liberators siege up. If these Liberators start sieging up anywhere oh, near man. his own base, He's going to get a very bad fight. Agreed. Agreed fully. And that is the strength go of right that now. composition. I would He's go. Why not? Well, I think he agrees with you. He's going to push forward here a little bit. The Stalkers are leading the way, but they can link back. He's trying to win some space. But look how far away these Liberators are seizing up right now. That's and once again, he's counterattacking with a couple of adapts. Love it. Stats is playing better right now, Jeff. Things are sort of going his way. He's starting to kind of make me a believer. Some of that army goes away, by the way, to shade even into the natural. That's not going to work out as much, but I like that he tried it. It is a planetary at that fourth base. He oh, pushes forward, but yeah. look at the range, man! Engaging on that, you're taking an extra one or two shots to then blink? Yeah. That's so much damage! Well, Stats has a little bit of money. He could get a few extra stocks, which is exactly what he's gonna Whoa. do. No, 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 no. You can't even do God, it. Liberator range is so good! There is a Stargate on the way, but there's also five extra gateways on the way as well. Storm. Stats knows that he needs to get a big fight yes. before Tempest. And, uh, I like the warp prism. Warp in a bunch of charge lots, go after that third, get in the main, warp in there as well. That's the kind of thing that can carve out the heart. But he's full of supply, by the way. Uh, Look, careful. You, you can't, can't warp anything in. You can't lose this prison. You can always uh, sacrifice a couple of units, maybe go for one. He's going to sacrifice his army in a second here. <laughs> oh, damn. No. I believe. Oh, he lost, he lost the, the prism. No, that's kind of terrible. Ew. Oh, my God. Storm is about to finish up, though. He does get a lot of economic that's good. damage done. But these liberators, Jeff. The is still there. The army is still the natural. Yeah. The harass is done. And this push. What's stopping it? Innovation has won so much space. He's waffling back and forth. That could have cost him a couple of hits. It doesn't. Innovation's going to win the high ground, and from here he can attack the natural and the third, uh, Roddy. You know, stats needs to oh, swing please. around. please. Give me Disrupt a shot. the dream does oh. get a good hit. Maybe that can actually make him go for a big blink. He has a lot of money. Just go for it, stats. Oh, oh, my God. He can't. No, this Look is at bad. this field. He has to I fight. He's got to do it. The storms go down at the base of the Liberators. Can he win enough? The Stalker's fight getting in there. He's starting to chop through those liberators. It looks like he might have won the space. Yeah, well, walk through. Please step out of the circle. He's stats. mostly out of it, but still some extra damage did happen there. His anti-air is quite limited, and I think it just cost him too much Rotterdam. If you look at the supply innovation, he's up about 20-ish here. But Stats got money. Come on, he should build two classes at the same time. Right. I would love uh, to just see, like, you know, a game four, a game five. In the end, I don't care who makes it to finals, but I just feel terrible for Stats. He had that rough finals against Innovation, yeah. Inky Yongi. And you just don't wish that upon anybody. That was okay, though, Yeah, Roddy. that was I mean, good. He, he's he down held. supply, but it's okay. Uh, Absolutely. He, you know, he's like you said, he had two claws to survive that. He can build two at a time, which is, I believe, exactly what he's doing. No, that's a unit count right there, so he's not making them just yet. He's actually going to push out. This, is, You know what? So he doesn't have the army to win this fight, but he's winning space. He's slowing down innovation. You see, if you're going to start that siege thing again, yeah. you got to do it all the way over here. And he survived the first push, which is the scariest. Once again, Stats has money. I'm not sure if he's already getting a fleet beacon or not. The amount of gateways that Stats has must be insane, by the way. I'm sure he's on like 14, 15 gate or something yeah. insane like that. Because he, uh, he already had a bunch of gates and Get then he wiped in like four, five three. or six more. He's doing a phenomenal job in keeping those oracles alive, by the way, Jeff. Like, yeah. I would have lost seven of them by now. <laughs> uh, I would, yeah. Minor conceptual at this point, they just would have died at birth. But leave some stasis wards is something that uh, I believe you or, yeah, you and Artos were talking about. You know, just a couple of traps, it really slows down the push. If 20-ish if supply of uh, bio gets slowed down, that's a believable scenario for innovation not being comfortable pushing Blink forward. Blink DT? Okay, I like it. An upgrade Why I haven't seen since forever. Since Fear Dragon played in the cast's esports earnings. Okay, there it is. Great game against It's the second yeah. reference of that tournament at this GSL. <laughs> really? Oh, oh yeah. I didn't make one. I Dan mean. Dan used it to try and make me feel bad about losing in my group. Oh, uh, well. 
Could have been tall, though. He would have brought it up 74 times. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's going to get a couple Liberators here, by the way. He, can, he might just stay here and fight. No, I don't like that. There's a huge concave of death. He doesn't like it either. And uh, man, that one blink heard around up. the world. He had a chance. He had a shot. But at the end of the day, innovation oh is gosh. still innovation. All the Colossus is dead. The Disruptor dies. Wow. And Kevin, it was one blink, man. He, he had a shot. A uh, blink too far there for stats. So suddenly, he is absolutely on the ropes. I don't think there's any way no. he's ever going to stop this army. He's going to blink past the circles. But there are still plenty of Marauders left on the ground. They will rip through these Stalkers. And unfortunately, we will never get to see the Blink Dark Templars as Stats is once again going to get GG'd by this man. Innovation who advances to the Grand Finals. He has looked good so far in this tournament. Yeah, I think he dropped good. a single map. Is that it? Yes. Trio Ayasano. It's a totally fine place to do that. Yeah, yeah he made Ayasano look, you know, pretty bad as Innovation is wont to do. But if we're being fair, he made Stats look pretty bad. Like, that was the best game, that game three. The other two were just like, mm, get out. Stats got a, yeah, I think Stats got a little bit unfortunate with the build in game number one, but in game number two, Innovation's execution was just fantastic. And in game number three, again, I like the way that Innovation is playing. I was screaming for Lib Range in the TY series. We never yeah. got it. Were, those were great games, though, so I didn't hate it. I don't find this the most fun playstyle to watch, but it seems really, oh, really it's effective. So strong. Yeah. It's, I, I don't feel like there's an argument out there. There's no Terran that's like, no, I don't like that upgrade. It's just that they're kind of like, eh. Getting that tech lab's kind of hard, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's really difficult. It's all about the counter attacks. It's it's all about maybe somehow swinging around and getting a great fight. Yeah. But against innovation, it's very hard to catch him off guard, Jeff. I believe innovation is on the stage, and we're about to hear some words from him as he is joined by Soldier. Welcome to GSL versus the world, and we have our first finalist, innovation. 안녕하세요, 이준영 선수. 첫 결승 진출입니다. 축하드려요. 네, 감사합니다. 와, 축하드려요. 방금 우리 대화를 했는데 you said that you didn't know that you would advance the next round. 우리 결승 진출 못할 거라고 생각했다고 했어요. 왜 그런 거예요? 어, 워낙에 좀 대진 자체가 어려운 대진이어 가지고 사실 또 변현우 선수나 김대엽 선수나 또다 어려운 상대여 가지고 좀 대진운이 없다고 생각을 했는데 에, 의외로 좀 경기가 잘 풀리고 또 컨디션도 괜찮아가지고 이긴 것 같아요. Beyond and Stats were a really good competitors, so I thought I had an I would I had unlucky competitors, and but I had really good games. I had a really good condition, and it worked out for me. And you just beat Stats, and compared to IEM Gyeonggi, how do you think he has improved? Oh. IEM 경기에서도 이제 김대엽 선수랑 경기를 하셨잖아요. 그때 비교해서 김대엽 선수 경기가 어떤 것 같나요? <웃음> 어 그때도 좀 압도적으로 이겼는데 오늘도 대엽이 형이 좀 마, 말린 것 같아요. 제가 약간 예상치 못한 약간 좀 흔치 않은 그런 운영 스타일을 해가지고 그리고 컨디션도 그렇게 좋아 보이지는 않아가지고 그래서 지금 이긴 하는 건가요? 아니요 아니요. <웃음> 잘하시는데 네. 운이 좋았네요. Uh, I completely beat him last time at IEM, but he didn't look so good today as well. So I was able to win against him. And the other side of the bracket, we have Sue and TY. And who would you prefer? 반대 쪽에는 이제 어윤수 선수 혹은 전태양 선수가 이제 기다리고 있어요. 누가 올라왔으면 좋겠어요? 어 개인적으로는 윤수 형이 올라왔으면 하는데. 누가 올라와도 왜 그런 거예요? 예? 왜 그런 거예요? Personally, he prefers 아... Sue, but why? 아, 아무래도 동쪽점보다는 해저전이 좀더 재밌을 것 같아요. I prefer uh, TVZ over TVT. 혹시 어연수 선수가 준우승을 계속하기 때문에 그런 건 아닐까요? 그런 건 아니죠? 아, 그럼요. 진짜 아니죠? Isn't it 아, because 예. Sue keeps coming in second and he says no? 그렇다면 다른 질문을 물어볼게요. 내일 이제 결승전 이제 팀 매치를 앞두고 있잖아요. 거기서 이제 세라 선수를 만나게 되었어요. 거기 이제 한 말씀 부탁드릴게요. 어 변현우 선수랑 하는 걸 봤는데 어 후반 가면 지겠더라고요. 그래서 네. 좀 초중반에 유리하게 가서 끝낼 끝내야 될것 같아요. I saw him play against Bion and I thought it would be better if I uh, crushed him in the 
early and the mid part of the game. 아무튼 첫 결승 진출 축하드리고요. 지금까지 이신영 선수를 만나보았습니다. This was innovation. Thank you very much.